Conjugation, transposition, and transduction are old school ways of performing genome manipulation that predate recombinant DNA methods. Despite their age, they're still very commonly used techniques. Conjugation involves the transfer of DNAs from one cell to another through mating. Transduction involves the transfer of DNAs from one cell to another via a phage particle intermediate. Transposition is the process of randomly inserting a DNA into the genome. This book here is an excellent resource for describing these and many other traditional genetic methods. Conjugation requires the action of many genes provided in trans. These are often supplied in the genome with special strains or sometimes they are provided on a separate plasmid. The site of conjugation on the DNA being transferred is called ORET and this is referred to as an origin of transfer. Multiple proteins provided in trans are required for this elaborate process to take place, but they all ultimately act upon the ORET sequence of the DNA being transferred. The initiation of conjugation begins with rolling circle amplification from the ORET sequence generating a single-stranded DNA that is exported from the cell through a pilus. The pilus attaches on the other end to a recipient cell and the DNA is delivered through this conduit. Here is an electron micrograph showing two E. coli undergoing conjugation through an F pilus. The donor strain contains the ORET encoding DNA and mixing of these cells with cells lacking F plasmid without shaking results in attachment of the cells by a conjugation pilus. That pilus is encoded by genes in the F plasmid or on another DNA in the donor cell. The pilus brings the two cells together and the ORET containing DNA is transferred into the recipient cell as a single-stranded intermediate. This single-stranded molecule is resolved in the recipient cell as a circular plasmid where it continues to replicate normally. There are two commonly used conjugation systems in E. coli, F plasmid and RP4. F plasmid is E. coli specific but RP4 enables E. coli to mate with other bacteria and even yeasts. These conjugation systems are mostly are most commonly used to transfer plasmid DNAs from one cell to another. However, it is also possible to transfer regions of the genome. If the F plasmid ORET sequence is incorporated into the genome of the donor cell, a region of the genome will be transferred into the recipient cell where it can undergo recombination with the native sequence. By controlling how long the two cells are allowed to mate, one can control what fraction of the genome gets transferred. Transposons are the workhorse of traditional forward genetics. They involve the random insertion of a DNA into the genome. There are three commonly used systems, TN5, TN10, and mu, and each is defined by a transposase protein and a short sequence that is in cis to and flanking the sequence to be transposed. These short sequences are often called terminal repeats, but in some contexts have a different name. Transposons are usually encoded as plasmid DNAs or PCR products and are introduced into the cell by conjugation or transformation. In all cases, a protein DNA complex is generated by reaction of the DNA with the transposase. This thing is called a transposome. If the transposase is genetically encoded on an introduced DNA, this complex is generated inside the cell transiently. Alternatively, purified transposase can be reacted in vitro with the DNA. You can even purchase such transposomes ready for transformation from companies like Epicenter. Transposons are most commonly used to knock out genes in the genome. Whenever they insert into a host gene, that gene's function is disrupted. However, transposons can also be used to randomly integrate a DNA into the genome and it is thus useful as a knock-in strategy. Whatever sequence you place between the terminal repeats will be incorporated into a random site of the genome. Thus, you can put any gene you want into the genome randomly using this technique. A common setup involves TN5 transposons. Here is PRL27, a popular variation. Working clockwise from 12 o'clock, this plasmid encodes the transposase followed by a TN5 terminal repeat, a conditional R6K origin of replication, a canamycin resistance gene, then another TN5 terminal repeat, then an RP4 origin of transfer. The transposon is defined by the sequence flanked by the TN5 sites. 
Thus, the R6K and KNR features are both present inside the transposon. This plasmid is transformed into a donor strain such as WM3064. This strain contains the peer gene for stable replication of the R6K origin, the RP4 conjugation genes, and a mutation in the DAPD gene. This mutation renders the strain unable to grow without added diaminopamelic acid, and thus other cells can be selected over WM3064 by growth on normal LB medium lacking this chemical. To do the mutagenesis experiment, you mix these PRL27 WM3064 cells with the cells you wish to mutate by smearing a paste of the two cells with each other on a piece of filter paper on a petri dish. The conjugation machinery transfers the DNA into the recipient cell. Without the peer gene, those recipient cells are unable to replicate the plasmid, but the transposase will nevertheless become expressed. This results in the formation of transposomes that hop into the recipient cell's genome randomly. Because the transferred cassette contains a selectable marker, mutant cells can be selected by growth on canamycin medium. P1 generalized transduction involves the transfer of random DNA fragments from one strain of E. coli to another. First, the donor cell is infected with P1 virophage. When a lytic phage infects a cell, usually it will package its own DNA. However, the process incorporates a piece of genomic DNA instead around 2% of the time, and the sequence incorporated into the phage head is a random sequence. The cell lysate is then sterilized with chloroform to kill any unlysed bacteria, and then that lysate is added to a sample of recipient cells. For the rare phages that contain a piece of genomic DNA, this DNA will be injected into the recipient cell where it will undergo homologous recombination with the recipient's genome. If that fragment of DNA contains a selectable marker, these transduced cells can be selected by growth on selected medium. P1 transduction moves 90 KB random chunks of the genome. It is thus useful for transferring single genes or even large gene clusters from one genome to another. Often people will use homologous recombination or phage at integration methods to first modify one cell's genome and then combine several such mutant genomes into one using P1 transduction. Note that some of the popular E. coli strains, such as DH10b, are resistant to P1 and thus cannot be used in this procedure. However, most older strains like MC1061 are amenable to the technique. 